Ooh, I'm hungry. I want cake. Hey, look, cake! That was pretty convenient, but the door is locked, and I'm stuck in adventure mode. There's absolutely no way I'm ever going to break this door down. Let's observe the signs. Maybe they'll tell us how to get in. Open the door with the big gray button. Free cake. Cake is one button push away. Just press the button, press the button, press it. Ah, oh, ye of little wisdom. Do you honestly think that I don't know how to press a button? Me? Me? Well, you are in for a big surprise, because I am going to stick it to your face. Watch and learn. Aw, oh, yeah. Pressing a button in style. So welcome back, guys. My name is Patch, and we are in what could be a very familiar world to you guys, or what could be a very unfamiliar world to you guys, depending on how long you've been around. Now, if you're unfamiliar with where we are, when I initially wanted to join Red Cubed, there was a contest going around. Actually, there were four contests. We had the option to apply to Shiro. We had the option to apply to Sherb, we had the option to apply to Nova, and we had the option to apply to Drew. And before Dave says I forgot, we also had the option to apply to the Nerd Herd. So there were five different contests going around, but they were all different. I think Nova and the Nerd Herd and Drew and um, uh, I'm forgetting someone were focused mainly on good builds, like build something awesome, and I am not necessarily very good at creating stuff like that. I like to think that I'm okay, but I am not very good. So when I wanted to apply to Redstone, to Red Cubed, <laughs> I just gave it away, when I wanted to apply to Red Cubed, the contest that I looked at was Sherbs, which was Redstone, and the challenge that he had was to build a Rube Goldberg machine. So... That's where this thing comes in. This is the exact same machine, the exact same world save even, that I used in my application to Red Cube. And it's a little laggy because um, it's a little bit old and it's a pretty big world size. And as you can see, this thing is the penultimate of all Red Rube Goldberg machines. I mean, there is no way you'd ever want to do this to get yourself into this little tiny room. But that's part of the Rube Goldberg, I guess, is to make something very difficult to do, just completely bonkers, insane. You, you get where I'm coming from. Well, in any case, I was deleting old worlds, and I happened to come across this one, and I realized, wow, I still have this world. You know what? This may be an opportunity to go through and do the explanation that I never got the chance to do because, well, I was lazy and it never occurred to me. But anyhow, I've got a couple backups of this world. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to run the machine. So without further ado, let's push the button and see if this still works because I'm honestly not sure if we're going to get anything. Gent um, uh, loading is pretty laggy. It's smooth. Let's try that. Uh, you can always go back and watch the original video because I put a lot of time in the, into the editing. Oh, and that suffocates the sheep. And also starts a cobblestone generator. And that builds up to here. And occasionally I remember this machine misfired and totally screwed everything up. Oh, looks like it's working. Yeah, brilliant, and oh, 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 there we go, <laughs> can't believe this thing still works, this is like um, four updates ago that I started building this, um, okay, well one of the villagers is gone, <laughs> there were supposed to be two, but uh, yeah, that's pretty cool, and that starts the beacon, which sets off this, Oh, oh! It worked on that side. Didn't work on this side. All right, that's okay. We only need one of the sides to work. Um. So yeah, arrows firing, and then the pig. 
and the TNT with actually no purpose and the water stream and 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 oh ah oh, yeah oh no no it does need both sides to work um all right well that was unfortunate i guess uh, that was the one i was expecting not to work sand has had some changes since then and when i built the machine that's where the sand landed but uh or i put the repeaters where i was getting the sand to land but the guess it's more standardized now or the locations that it's going to land in have changed i don't know it's i guess it sort of depends on how you fire it anyways um i guess well i can trigger this side manually i suppose but you get the general gist of how this thing works um tnt archery target and um I will link the original video in the description, but I should warn you, sounded a little more immature back then, really wasn't into commentating, I think I was pretty, pretty quiet, um, and it's not the greatest video quality, but it is more edited than this, and it'll give you a better overview of the entire machine. So, now that that is done, let us claim our prize, and delicious cake. And we didn't even have to use the door. Okay then, so we are back, and um, here I'm going to give a sort of step-by-step -step rundown of how the machine works. And I've taken the liberty of breaking redstone in some key places so that I can show you each individual subsystem. So I guess the first uh, thing that we need to show you is the very beginning. So I'm going to show you the little bud piston circuit that we've got going on here and take a look at that. Yep, so that was the bud piston array and you've just seen it turn on two beacons. Um, now essentially what's going on here is uh, a bud switch occurs when you power a piston diagonally like this, but it doesn't update unless you update the piston. So essentially this is just one giant bud switch array and this piston gets updated which updates this one, which updates this one, which updates this one and they all do that um, in a similar fashion. Likewise if we turn it off and then update a piston they all go back at the same time. I don't know why that is, it's just how it works and basically all, all that this button is doing is updating a single piston right here. It's not powering it, it's just literally updating it, and that is causing the rest of them to extend. And that's not gonna work anymore, is it? So um anyways, you get the you get the basic idea. So it's 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 pretty cool. Now there's no reason to have two beacons and have two lines coming up to this next stage, but I thought it just looked much cooler. And why is our FPS going so crazy? Um Excellent. All right, so a next part of the circuit is basically just a boat dispenser. Now, keep in mind we were playing in the 1.4 snapshots when I built this, and I think this world was 1.3, so this was brand new technology that you could dispense a boat into water like that. And all that happens here is it flows downhill, gathers a little bit of speed, and smashes on the glass, and the items fall down and land on this pressure plate. So let's go ahead and watch that right now. Yep, and um, okay, perfect. It doesn't always work. Um, and that basically powers this pressure plate under here, and that turns this torch on and allows the minecart to move. And let's watch that. Brilliant which powers this redstone line, which brings me to the TNT cannon, which is probably the coolest part of the whole machine, or, or one of the coolest parts. There's a lot of TNT, actually. Um, so basically what happens here is that uh, the second the minecart lands here, all of these TNT blocks get activated, except for the middle one, which um, takes a longer time because of the delay. While that is happening, this note block contraption is firing, sort of like a countdown. And basically, this cannon launches a piece of TNT up here, and it explodes when it gets to about this height, and that knocks out this redstone line. And um, I have everything else disabled up here, so I will show you what happens 
Uh, I'll just show you the TNT cannon. Oh! Well, that's the first time I've ever seen that happen. Oh! <laughs> I forgot to put the repeater back. Oh, that's that's just stupidity on my part. Um, but if it had worked, it would have launched the TNT up here, at which point it would have broken a couple pieces of redstone dust, and this would have happened. Now, I've installed levers here, but... Oh, that's not doing... <laughs> okay, so we missed it. Um... Basically, there's a sheep in there, and the piston extends, suffocates them, and they drop wool. And that wool flows along and lands on a pressure plate. Both sides, the same thing occurs. And, yep, yeah, they get there at roughly the same time. Uh, so, while that is happening, this side gets a pulse. Of course, it doesn't because I've gone ahead and... Yeah, perfect. Of course, it doesn't because I've broken the redstone here. And that starts this cobblestone generator. Now what happens here is when a pulse travels through this block, that means that there's cobblestone and that starts er, and that pushes up this piston down here. So let's activate it once. Yeah, so as you can see, every time a block is formed, it pushes it up. Now that brings it up to here, which basically just turns on this whole thing. And the only thing that this does is drop the TNT into the water beneath it. And that's just purely aesthetic, but then again, isn't the entire machine. Um, now this was going to be a beacon, but it appears that when I actually ran it, I completely forgot to install the beacon afterwards. So, a um, little behind the scenes thing, the part of the machine that never was. Um, and anyways, that leads to this piston, which retracts, that breaks all the signs instantaneously, the sand falls down and lands on the tripwire, which again was also a new feature of 1.3, and uh, the tripwire it breaks into items and that activates the tripwire. So let's go ahead and activate the um, cobblestone generator and get that all going, and we'll fly up here for a closer look, and it does take a minute to work. Um, so there we go. Yep. And, yeah, so that's how that works. And as you can see, we always manage to get items landing on the tripwire. And this is a simple RS NOR latch. Um, okay, a three-way RS NOR latch, which basically means that these carts won't go until this signal turns off. So the easiest way to turn the signal off is, or, uh, is when everything is done. Um, and that launches these minecarts, which fly through this contraption, land down here, and pick up the villagers. So, let's go ahead and bear witness to that real quick. And... Break that. Um, I'm not sure why I'm getting such weird FPS in this world. I think it's just there's a lot going on uh, as we speak. Maybe if I turn, turn off my... Um, uh, lighting, that'll do it. Yeah, and it doesn't really make a big difference in this world. So, there we go. And... Yep, see, it got that one. Oh, that's a problem. Uh, sometimes they get stuck. I have not seen that happen too often. But anyways, they land on this detector rail, which activates a current here, and on the other side, that feeds back into this dispenser, which fires out a zombie. Uh, and that zombie path finds to the villager and lands on these pressure plates, which was also a new feature of 1.3, if I remember correctly, pathfinding zombies. Uh, and this little thing is here just so that he doesn't burn up in the daytime. And, yep, so these lines turn on, RS Nor and this, this redstone turns on, and so does the beacon. Uh, and that brings us to, the sa uh, to another TNT cannon, very, very simple. These all activate instantaneously, and at the end of this long tick pulse thing, um, the sand extends and gets fired. Um, now, I've taken the liberty of adding a whole bunch of repeaters here, so it should hopefully activate on the first try. Um, let's give that a shot. And... There we go. 
Oh, I forgot to fix the redstone on this side of it. Um, which is actually good, because if I hadn't, this side of the machine would have activated. Right, so basically, somehow the signal gets through from the sand, and that feeds into this thing, which is basically a giant arrow cannon that fires through the lava, and when a uh, flaming arrow hits TNT, it ignites the TNT. So um, the idea is that this is just a whole bunch of torches underneath, and when I turn off the master signal, the torches are going to start flickering and firing, and the idea is they go through the lava, they ignite the TNT, and that brings us on to the next part. So let's go ahead and do that. Oh, first try. That normally takes a while. Um, oh, oh, this part's already going. There's basically a redstone torch in there, and I was going to take some time to explain how this worked. Um, there's basically a redstone torch in... Oh, it's getting laggy already. Redstone torch in this obsidian box, and when the TNT goes off, it destroys it, and evidently some of the redstone outside as well. Um, and that's another another cannon over here. And they, these were just loaded with fire charges. They fire once, destroy the paintings, and that activates this bud switch array over here. Same technology as over there. And um, that turns on an output and starts this minecart. And very, very basic detector rails. And it gets to the top, and nothing happens. Because I secretly removed the water bucket before we started. Uh, and these are just signs, and if it hasn't been made clear yet, signs are capable of holding back water. Um, so that's the last thing that happens. And let's go ahead and add that and give it a flick. That's not going to work because the cart's still on it. There we go. All right, perfect. And that just sends a water stream and destroys this torch, which turns off the redstone line. Of course, it doesn't because I've gone ahead and... Uh, place this redstone block here to stop it, and that takes a line underneath and retracts the piston, which destroys the door. And that is the entire machine. And of course, if we were really smart, we would have just walked around or used this button, but um, it's a Rube Goldberg, so what are you going to do? At least we got some delicious cake. And um, a message. You weren't Aperture Science certified to push that button, so you're not a good person. You know that, right? I think I do, GLaDOS. A year and four months in, I think I do. So anyways, guys, thank you very much for watching. If enough people want, and please do say so in the comments, if enough people are interested, I will release the world for download. Uh, of course, a fresh version of this world, because I've gone ahead and run the machine already. But um, Anyways, my name is Patch, and a year and four months into it, thank you very much for watching.